Well, right now we're running on the offensive side. We wanted to get him in. The car's handling good. We want to have a good look at the tires, make sure we're not having any trouble. Uh, and all the engine temperatures, everything's just perfect. So we're just What'd you find with the tires? Perfect. No problem. Well, that's the story from Pitt Road on Team Penske's side of things. And Bobby Unser, you think it might have been a stagger change? Well, I think Rick changed the stagger, obviously. He wouldn't change the tires that quick, number one. Number two on Mario's, he's in a little bit of trouble because nobody likes to adjust just the right front wing for a 500-mile race. Next Saturday here on ABC Sports, great golf coverage continues in the final major tournament of the year, the PGA Championship. We'll bring you live 18-hole coverage of the third and the fourth rounds, the PGA Championship. That's live Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern, here on ABC Sports. The 20 car, Emerson Fittipaldi, picks up the pace in the third turn now. The pace car accelerates away. You're on with Michael Andretti, who runs back in 12th place, owing to those early stops and getting out of the order of the cycle. 40 miles are already completed, the 500-mile run here. And Fittipaldi begins to pick the pace up. Al Unser is right up behind Teo Bobby and beginning to challenge Bobby for second. So Al Unser, the four-time Indianapolis champion in a drag race with Teo Bobby and a nice spread of cars behind them as Unser picks up second. Bobby drops back and Bobby Rahal closes in as well. Also notice the Poncho Carter to the outside who started back in this field. The first winner of the Michigan 500 has closed in and is sitting right behind Al Unser. Poncho started 11th and is now running in third. He looks to me like he's handling really good because he's pushing on Al pretty hard right there. As far as the Porsche, it looks like they just don't get good starts. So could be he's got an electronic fuel injection problem, Paul. Poncho Carter there almost being passed by Teo Fabi as he himself tries to make a bid on Al Unser. And Poncho and, Carter gets whoa. fast. He can run a really low line, but well. something's wrong as Al really comes off the pace coming off of the second turn and drops well back. Well, something broke on the car. We can't see what it is right now, but obviously he got an engine or transmission, I would guess. Wow, shades of Indianapolis. The whole three Penske cars retired. Sullivan was in trouble earlier in this race. Well, that's awful early to be having those kind of troubles, Sam. Al Unser, nothing being laid down on the track, so we continue under green flag. There is the leader of the race, the 20 car, Emerson Fittipaldi. And we look back into this fight for second place. Teo Fabi, Poncho Carter, and now Ari Leyendijk has moved up into fourth place. Nice little fight. We want to remember also that when we see these cars breaking early on, that's all new stuff that they just put in the cars yesterday. So we really shouldn't be having these problems, but the engines haven't been tested on the racetrack. Poncho Carter continues to challenge Teo Fabi. Ari Leyendijk right behind. Rick Mears and Danny Sullivan both made stops under the yellow. Bobby Unser was of the opinion that uh, Mears changed some of the stagger setting. That is the uh, relationship of the right rear tire to the left rear as Poncho Carter and Leyendijk fight, and Leyendijk moves past Carter. Ari started in 10th place. Now that's one of the new Cosworth engines versus the old Cosworth. Poncho Carter on the right there as the old Cosworth engine, Leyendijk in the black car as the new Cosworth engine. Boy, look at the fight go on as Poncho Carter really wants a piece of this action as he comes back past Leyendijk. Let's go to the pits, Jack Aru. Well, Paul, what a terrible break for. The Al Unser Sr. has brought one of Team Penske's cars in and he reported in that the engine had just shut off. Now what they have to do is the laborious process of taking off the bonnet, going through all of the electronics, a little bit of a turbo fire in the back. And now there seems to be a problem with Poncho Carter as well, Paul. That's right, Jack. Poncho Carter has pulled up into the high groove, slowed down, and is out of the racing line as uh, he is a little fight. Seems to have gone away very suddenly as well. Well, it's an awful lot of problems so early in the race. Now, again, we're going to have to, there's nothing else wrong with a car that's visible, so it's going to be Probably an engine problem again with Poncho, and it kind of shows you how hard it is at Michigan because they really don't shot him off all the way around. Let's go back to Jack Aru. Well, Paul, let's brief you on what they're doing right behind me here. What they're actually doing now is they've got a briefcase full of all the electronic devices for Al Unser Sr.'s car. They're going one by one, exchanging them, hoping to isolate the problem. Thus far, I checked with Teddy Mayer, and he says he's not all that certain what the problem is. The engine just quit. Teddy Mayer, of course, back working with the Penske team after a short stay in England. Trying to work with the Brabham organization this year. They still can't get that engine to work right. Bobby Unser, my question would be, they have all this sophisticated electronics, but it seems to be what is failing more often than not this year. Well, would, would you not say, let's not go to that? 
Well, Paul, it, it makes more power and it makes the fuel mileage. And as long as you have that little carrot dangling in front of you like fuel and power, hey, you have to go for it. And it's the vibration that gets to him pretty bad. Here's the fight for fourth place, Bobby Rahal. And sitting right behind him is Michael Andretti. Mario is closing in behind Michael. So with the stops by the two Penske cars, Sullivan and Mears, and some of the dropouts we've seen at the front of the field, most notably Al Unzers and Pancho Carter, the Andrettis have managed to work their themselves back up into a good position. Now remember, the Andrettis were clear back at the back because they made a first pit stops early on, and now they're getting back up in the serial scoring where they're going to be competitive. You ride with Michael Andretti now as he tries to overhaul Bobby Rahal, and you get an idea. Here you look back from Bobby. That's Michael just behind. It gives you an impression, though still not a clear one, of how steep the banking is here. Michael is going to try Bobby Rahal down to the inside as they come down in and across the start-finish line at the Tri-Oval. And Michael is able to get past Rahal. Now that's Chevrolet power in Michael's car, Codsworth power again, the new Codsworth engine in Rahal's car. And you can see how the cars move back and forth sideways as they get into the airstream of the other cars. Well, the drivers really have to hold on to them hard right there. Both Ray Hall and Michael work around a slower car. You ride now with Bobby Ray Hall. Look at how much his dashboard is vibrating down in there. This is slapping at 217 miles an hour. Let's go down to Jackaroo. Well, disappointment for another team after running up front. Poncho Carter, a place where lately he's not been accustomed to. John Barnes, you call the shots. What did Poncho radio in the, radio in the problem to be? With you said the motor let go going down the front straightaway. We were really just taking it easy at first. We thought we could go on up and take care of the, the guys up front later. When you run so well early on and you get your hopes real high, what's the disappointment like at this point when you see the car smoking by you and going back to Gasoline Alley? Well, if it wasn't for the highs and lows, you wouldn't know where the middle was in this business, I guess. I guess that just about says it all. John Barnes, one of the good men in the sport. Pancho Carter has had some brilliant moments in the Indy car. He's really had some good runs. One here in Michigan at Nazareth a couple years ago. Given proper equipment and a car that'll last under him, he is going to be terrific. Well, that's really something, Paul, to be able to take a standard Cosworth like that and get up and run with the front tie. So our hat's off to Poncho for a little while. Back with Michael Andretti now, sitting just ahead of Ari Leyendijk, the leader of the race is still Emerson Fittipaldi with 31 laps now complete in the action. 250 laps, the scheduled distance. And Emerson Fittipaldi has a nine-second lead over the second-place car of Teo Bobby as now Al Unzer rolls back into the fight. We'll be back. We're back at the Michigan 500. You're looking at a battle between that green and white car of Teo Fabi and Michael Andretti lined up right behind with Ari Leyendijk in the fight as well, as well as Mario Andretti. The fight is for second place. Emerson Fittipaldi is now 11 seconds out in front of the field. And look at Michael as he tries to get down inside Teo Fabi. Brings him way down on the course, but can't hold the speed there. And the march with a Porsche engine is able to pull away just a bit. Leyendijk continues to stay right out of it. Leyendijk pulled low as they came off the last corner. Right now, all the action's happening in the turns, Paul. The Porsche, the March chassis of the Porsche car is really sticking good. Now, if this and Ari Leyendijk case, went for the pits when he came off of the corner, and he came off hot, locked up all the brakes, and he came in for this stop. Bobby, it looks routine. They're just refueling the car. So yeah. apparently, at 36 laps, he'd run what he felt was the limit. It is. He did. He did run the limit, Paul. The idea was he didn't stop early on, and neither the two stopped. Some of the other guys did. So now he's out for a, a normal run. The problem is he's done the green. If they have a yellow now, he could be in trouble. Else. There's a Porsche going by. Some of the tactics being played very early in the race. The Penske team, both Sullivan and Mears, made early stops on the 17th lap during the yellow caution period. Ari Leyendijk, who just saw a stop for 15 seconds, at the same time he was in the pits, Al Unser Jr. made a stop a little bit longer at about 19 and a half. Tail Bobby still occupying second. Here is Ari Leyendijk of just a few moments ago. Look at, he came off that course so hot, his pit, one of the first, he locked the brakes up, got it slowed down, and then made the turn in. He just got too much front brake on the car. It's set up more for road racing rather than a high-speed joint. Something they don't pay attention to here is the brakes. The leader, Emerson Fittipaldi, works his way around, continues to put time on the rest of the field. It's now 13.1 seconds out in front of Teo Fabi. 
Michael Andretti runs in third. His father, Mario, runs in fourth. Ari Leyendijk, when he made the stop, vacated that fight. And Bobby Rahal runs in the fifth position.